different thing. All right, so let's talk fishing. Um, the thing that you invented, talk about that. How does it help the, the anglers catch more fish? Because that's what I'm all about. I want to catch quantity, not so much just quality. I, I, I'm i thrilled every time I catch a fish. Well, it's it's something that uh, uh, artificial guide, uh, lure fishermen, if you will, they change lures. And it takes time to create your own knots, and you got to do this. And I fish at, uh, primarily at night. Late wee hours of the night, I hunt for trophy fish. You know, and I've gotten a couple world records. People recognize what I do, and I fish hard to the point where I fish about 279 days in a year. Mm. And and there are things that you, you know when when you do something a lot, and you there's always a wish list. I wish I could have something that does this or that. And when you're changing lures, and as we all know, when you're trophy hunting, it's time management. Time management, knowing your the quarry that you're you're targeting, understanding when they come in, very narrow window, because they didn't get big for being stupid, all right? So you have to understand their migration and what have you. And once you do that, you have a very finite window and changing lures, because changing lures is, is try to match the hatch. That term is, you gotta know what they're eating, you gotta understand what kind of structure, how deep, how fast the water is moving. So I created a little power clip. It looks like a, a little clip but it allows you to change lure instantly in the dark. That's what I'm talking and about. Which actually, mm -hmm. you know, everybody needs it. When you're fishing really on, on a very specific narrow window, when you see a blitz or lots of fish, they're just zooming by, you have the wrong lure and you got to struggle, find the lure and then you have to tie <laughs> right. the knot and, and you got, you know, your adrenaline's going, your arms and legs are shaking, you know, a power clip, just clip on, clip off and it's strong as hell. And uh, it helps the fishermen fish fa faster, catch bigger fish, if you will, because it, it, it's just stronger than, uh, than most knots. So it's tactical angles. And I came out with different lures where most of my peer are world record holders, tournament winners, uh, avid anglers, the, the underground folks that really fish hard, that don't want to reveal their secret spots. So we all gather together and say, hey, what do you like to see or what kind of issues that you have? And we all brainstorm and we come, we come up with products like that. I That's hate fantastic. always talking about my family on this, but for me, fishing is family. Um, well, I, yeah. And I, I was raised by my grandfather fishing as far as my fishing goes. Right. And um, this is usually how it goes, Alberto. I'm, I'm in the lily pads. And I totally messed up one oh, rod. Oh, you, you so are he, a he large me, mouth bass dog. Right, right, right. So <laughs> then he, he gives me his, so, right. you know, because his isn't messed up. And then he fixes mine. By the time he's fixed mine, I'm already in some other lily pads and it's totally messed oh, up man. with your stuff well, it could have saved us uh, a lot oh it could have saved you oh yeah a ton of time <laughs> absolutely talk about you growing up fishing though who, who brought you up uh, in, in well like... actually i live in that era and i don't know how much time i have here you but, have time uh it, it's it's um you know if you look at an asian guy with the name of alberto right <laughs> come on <laughs> exactly so but but it, it, it comes in that era uh, a period where uh, i was born in hong kong and during uh when japan invaded China. That's a historical moment which nobody wants to face up to the reality of what went wrong. That was during the communism at its worst, power hungry. And I come from a family of five sisters and one brother. And Japan was invading uh, China where my dad and my mom used to say, hey, you know, a lot of murder, a lot of rapes and what's going on. So we had to go find a place immediately, my dad. So we went to Brazil. So I grew up in Brazil, I learned fishing, and I, yes, I'm that poor kid who walked barefooted in the jungle of Brazil with my brother, hand lining for all kinds of crazy fishing. Wow. No, then, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and Brazil wow. was actually a, a sanctuary escape area. So my dad came to America in Manhattan, and I grew up in Man Manhattan, Lower East Side, and he had a little place called Manhattan Art and Antique, and that's where I live in, in, in an era where there's the Javelin Brothers, is the Spanish Harlem, and uh, and I love fishing all my life. I, I'm the kid who used to take my bicycle, East River, Central Park, City Island, and whatever. And then, um, then I went to an advertising uh, school, School of Visual Arts. I got a degree, and immediately uh, the agencies scooped me out of the, uh, the, the class. I was double major, and then I became a, a, a creative director and I went to, I was in charge of WPIX TV, all the advertising, all the marketing. And because it was such a, 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 New York was the staple 
the, the flagship of all advertising of, of broadcasting. So from there, they put me, they, they gave me opportunities to work with WGN, which is Chicago, KTLA, and to the point where everything got big and, and glorious. Uh, and then I told you about the digital era. Um, it was a challenging where you have a lot of friends in a new world, technology change, you know, everything is real fast. But then I had to lose my friends because uh, my job was to cut staff 50% and increase productivity. And from that point, on, I never really felt good. And I just needed to get away from that monkey suit world and do what I love. And that's what fishing. All right. Your first trophy fish, where was it? And, uh, you know, do you have to go out deep? Do you have to always go out 100 miles to catch a, a good fish? Or can you catch some of them near the shore? Uh, if you do your homework, and I keep a very tight log. If you do your homework, if you know the fish, some of the biggest or the biggest fish that you can catch offshore, they do come inshore to spawn. Um, and that's when you take advantage of that uh, spawning opportunity. You catch them in a very short, maybe uh, three month, not even, I'm sorry, three week period. They come in, they spawn and go back out to the ocean. Once you figure that out, you can catch them uh, from shore. So I've, I've gotten big stripers, big tuk tuk, which is blackfish, uh, where everybody thinks you have to, you need a boat. And that's why I actually want to fish from land base because I like to prove people wrong that you can actually catch monster fish. And you don't have to worry too much on high technology. You know, you, what, what you got to do is actually understand the migration and stick to the fundamental basics. And then not, that's how you know how to catch these fish. What are you teaching people here this weekend? Well, what I'm teaching is, huh, coincidentally, uh, how to catch monster fish, fresh or salt, via land base, and how to catch the personal best. I'll give 10 best tips how to catch personal best. And it works for everybody. It has worked for, for many, many people. I've, I've written many articles, including IGFA, which is International Guild of World Record. Um, and that's what I'm all about. And I'm so fortunate to have my friends over here. Uh, I'm here in Connecticut at this great show. And uh, I am so thrilled because I can't wait because we live, we li we've been living in this two critical, strange, odd world that we're living in. Everybody needs to fish. So I'm here to share the passion. And what better place to be here at the show? Alberto Nye, they call him Crazy Alberto. All right, so we're talking saltwater. Let's talk freshwater. Oh, let's talk. What, what's the, all right, you like to fish from land. Yes, sir. What's, what's a good area around New England where you can fish from land and maybe get a trophy fish? Okay, that's a, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that's a very smart question. Okay, just bear in mind, a largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, um, we're, they're coming out of hiatus, if you will, and they're about to spawn. And, and, and one thing I do encourage, um, just because I target the big fish and the spawners, you know, it, it, you have to handle this fish with great care because these are the breeders and these are the future of our fish. So hypothetically, because um, I'm originally from, uh, I moved to Florida, but I came here. Um, and you have to understand the migration and the path as well as when they spawn and, and it's about water temperature. When the water temperature hits about 58, 59 degrees, they start spawning. And that's largemouth bass, that's smallmouth bass, that's uh, the northern pikes and including the muskies. But this place where we are here in Connecticut has a phenomenal, incredible largemouth bass fishery, which is freshwater. And the striped bass, Migration is about to happen. And just, just three days ago, I was down in New Jersey crushing big stripers that will be here very soon. I want to know about fishing in the East River. I want to know about the Dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm used to fishing ponds on golf courses, man. I'm used to throwing my line in streams that you probably shouldn't be fishing in. Tell me well, about some crazy yeah. places. <laughs> urban. I want to know about urban fishing. You know, um, what the water quality has improved dramatically since in the early 80s and 90s you know they real finally the government realized that pollution was bad <laughs> finally <laughs> come on finally they finally <laughs> better late than never baby exactly so the water has gotten better quality's gotten better so all these pelagic fish including tuna bluefin tuna whoever thought that within a mile or two miles you could catch bluefin tuna 600 700 800 pound tuna but that's only literally in less than three miles away from the statue of liberty but let's talk about uh, like your question east river yeah 
East River, this dry bass fishery, okay? I mean, I don't want to get too involved in, in the scientific uh, background on striped bass, but the, the highly migratorial fish, uh, Chesapeake Bay, is the home of nursing grounds for striped bass. That place, that habitat has gone to kibosh. It's no good anymore. So Hudson River and the river behind here, not too far, the Thames River, happens to be a prime nursing ground for stripers. But back then, there used to be so many striped bass on the East River. And I did a field test before the moratorium. I, there, there was a closure for a good eight years because striped bass has been uh, over, overly harvested. And they were, it was issued because of pollution and whatever. And we did a field test before it closed right under this East River to be able to say, hey, you know what? Uh, the water quality is improving, but there's some issues with the, the growth level. There's certain issues about the moratorium that needed to be placed because a lot of those fish were being over, overly harvested. So just from East River and also Hudson River, Pier 17 to be exact. Wow. That was the final days before they closed. And then, then it made a rebound where the government decided, hey, let's open it up for the uh, entire fishery. Wow. Have we overfished certain fish like we see, you know, wicked tuna and all this yes. other stuff, deadliest catch with the, you know, the crabs and things like that. It, it, are there are there shows like that that exploit that stuff or does it, it bring attention to, hey, we need to make sure that we, we take care of uh, some of these things? Like you were saying, can they bring back the, the spawning grounds? Yeah, is that possible? You, you, you know, that saying too much good thing is no good for you. And that's basically what it is. Technology today, I mean, the the, the fish recorders, the tech, the, the fishing reels, the rods from, and we have car, carbon carbides, we have um, so many new technology, braid lines that is super strong, super thin, allowed to catch much longer. All that is great for fishing and the electronics. My God, you even have sight skins, depth finders, you'll be able to spot, you'll be able to identify. So those fish don't stand no chance. So I mean, <laughs> right. come on, let's be you real. know their names. Yeah, Other names. <laughs> and, 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 and over harvesting heavy uh, over harvest. Yes, I mean that when you talk about tuna, uh, the, the tuna sushi craze. I love sushi. Okay, my wife uh, does too. Oh yeah, How, and you don't? Uh, I like everything cooked. <laughs> I'm with you, Alberto. I'm with you. Come you on, like <laughs> Thank you. you know it's um, uh, the sushi craze is got over exploited in, in the early 70s and 80s and uh, in mid 90s that's when the boom went crazy and just in manhattan alone because i grew up in manhattan okay um in less than five years i if i recall i did a, a, a research over 700 japanese sushi bars opened in manhattan in a year and when you have japan being the number one exporter i mean you know Right. All the tuna, and, and I used to tuna fish a lot until the government decided, and, and I'm not afraid to tell it the way it is, because it's not just my feelings, but all the other captains who said, we used to target tuna, and then suddenly the government realized that tuna is a lot of money to be had, then from what used to be the tuna, I don't know if you remember a Charlie the Tuna cans. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. remember that. It was only like, at, at the price of tuna back then was five cents per pound try over 30 dollars a pound today yeah that's crazy. and if money doesn't talk the government took advantage of that and all the captains so right now uh even when you watch uh, any tuna show per se they always say you know uh the tuna fishery is, is is in danger um so finally less tuna it was a great thing but um uh management is 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 at, at that is most important part because with the technology if we don't do anything about it there won't be any fishing we're all going to be golfing if you will alberto i don't know if you saw my cane pole that um, is an old cane pole. <laughs> what is wrong with you what do you mean what's wrong with me listen brother i don't even need a pole sometimes i got two hands on the on the line and yes. nothing but a piece of gum on the other side I caught a catfish about six years ago like that i want a story like that from you what is some weird fishing tactics that you with have used. that cane pole all right you could catch sunfish you could out, catch largemouth bass oh you want me to hold this too oh, i don't know oh, if you were just so right. impressed with it that you <laughs> had to touch it <laughs> it's no, sweet no. right all right oh, of course it's sweet i remember you grew uh, up in brazil I, hand lining so this what is, so what kind of fish the, did you catch down there i yeah. caught tilapia i got sardine I, I i grew up in sao paulo and and real so you really just snagging them with a with you could do that lining a hook just yeah. snagging them with and your then hand. make sushi out of it 
<laughs> You're the best, man. But but seriously, uh, I, I'm so thrilled to be here in the show. Um, I encourage everybody. There's so many great captains here uh, from fresh water and salt water. Um, and we're, uh, I can't say any more good stuff about this. So you're on tomorrow at noon. I am on tomorrow at noon. It's, it's a round table. Uh, uh, let's just say Roy, Roy Leva, phenomenal fisherman. And Al Gags, uh, everybody knows Al Gags. He's one yep. of my old heroes. I'm, I, I re retract that, the word old. <laughs> 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 and and uh, we're going to allow the audience to... Uh, to ask, it's it's one of those things where fishermen are very secretive, but it's a whole no bar, right? Shoot giveaway, and we're going to be as real as possible. And from time to time, because Roy fishes differently than I do, and uh, so we're going to jab each other. Cool, Alberto. Thank you so much for giving us a few minutes, and thanks for coming to the show today. No, thank you. And uh, you know, come on, everybody, come on out here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll be right back after this.